So, now we've rendered a document as a PDF from your Functions app. It would, it would be nice if that document looked a little bit nicer, right? Maybe if it had some styles and fonts and colors. Let's mash on that. Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. We're here to. I'm Dave Paquette. We're here today with James Chambers and Simon Timms. Simon is going to be chatting with us about how to make our PDFs look better, style and them up a bit. I like it when you do the intros. You always remember to like tell people our names. I never do that. All right. Uh, so if you were here for the last episode, and if you weren't, where were you? Um, then you will know that we were generating PDF documents from our Azure Functions app using this handy-dandy PDF conversion tool. Uh, but we were doing it really brutally by just like writing HTML strings in a file here and that kind of sucked. So we were hoping to find a better way around that. Uh, and I think that I have an idea about that. And what that is, is this thing called Razor Engine Core, uh, which sounds really cool. Go ahead and it's a fantastic that. name. It is. Uh, so, if you have ever written ASP.NET MVC back to maybe even like version one, um, the engine that is used to display HTML to, to render HTML is called Razor, uh, and we can actually take the engine that runs that uh, and extract it from this kind of standard web tooling and use it somewhere else. So this is a, a functions project. So it doesn't come with some sort of full ASP.NET stack in it, but I can go and install that Razor engine and I can make use of that. So hopefully that ended up getting installed, it did. Um, so let's go ahead and see what this might look like to build up this HTML. So we can get rid of uh, maybe even all of that and we'll start over again with a different approach. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new Razor engine. Let me bring in one of the namespaces. Oh, nope, I'm pretty sure that was not the right namespace. Let's try that again. This time paying attention to what I'm doing. Razor engine core. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to pull in a template for this. So this could be a bunch of HTML that you just have in a string here, but I kind of feel like that defeats the purpose of this. And we probably want to pull in um, some information from a file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new folder here, I'm creatively call it views. And inside that, I'm going to add a new item, which is just going to be an HTML page. Type a template for that page and we'll call that sample one. Okay, so that's just a, a standard HTML page and we'll just write um, hi there, a page in there. We'll explore a few more options about that once we get there. So I'm gonna compile this and I need to basically read that file in. So I'll still file down read all text from somewhere. Uh, this bit can be a little bit tricky, so I'm gonna steal this one from my off-screen implementation here, but basically it looks like this. We're just gonna go and find the, the template location on disk and read that in. Why is that still red? Oh, I guess this is a static class. It drives me crazy. All right, so we're gonna read all the text here and we're gonna take that from something like path.join uh, get template location and then views and sample one dot footable. So that should hopefully read in our text uh, and we're gonna compile that with our razor engine. Uh, and then what we can do is we can just like run our template now. So that just looks like template dot run um, and we can 
give that some sort of object model. Um, we'll just do it like this. Name equals name for now. that in down here. So let's throw a breakpoint on here. We can just take a maybe one line ahead. And we just take a look at our result. Let me render it and make sure that that's looking like what we want. So let's kick that off. And we'll see where I've typoed. That's just going to start up. All right, so let's refresh this page and see what happens. Oh, what did I do wrong? Uh, could not find part of the file path. Okay, so let's go double check what I messed up on that one. Okay, so, oh, I know exactly what I didn't do. I forgot to embed that file in the project. So I'm just going to set this thing here to copy always on build and we'll give that another try. So that was just tucked behind the the video on screen there but if you're wondering in Visual Studio you just have to right click on that to go to properties and then down below pick the compile options. Yes, sorry. For those following along at home. All right, let's try that again here. Let's see how that goes. All right, so we've hit our breakpoint here. Uh, so we have in here a result, uh, which just looks like that HTML page. We'll carry on, we'll let that render out to PDF. Okay, so we've got hi there hey, from right the page. Uh, but this isn't very exciting. Uh, so we'd like to make that a little bit more interactive. So if we go back over here, uh, we can actually do like model.name. run that again. And can you go back to the function really quickly there too, again? I just, yeah. I'm older, so I have a hard time. So you actually are running the template and passing the name in as an object. Okay, right. Okay. Right, so right now I'm just passing in like a anonymous object here that just happens to have a name sure. as part of its property. Yeah. Uh, and then it's going to read that and run it. So. But you could pass any model into that that you wanted. That's right. So it's and, figured out the name is Bob um, yeah. and rendered that. But yeah, you can pass anything in here. Uh, and of course, within this file, you can do anything that you can do inside of Razor. So we can do loops, we can do counters, um, we can you know, express objects, anything that we want to in here. Excellent. Okay, so um, in the last episode, uh, we talked about maybe some trouble with custom fonts. Oh, yeah. Simon, so, I mean, uh, just off in our chat there, I actually uh, grabbed some code from Google where you can just embed a style and then use um, a style tag on a um, on a span, for example. So maybe uh, that's something that we could try. So that style just needs to, I'm, I, I don't have to coach you through, but I'll, I'll let me just find But he'll do it anyway. I'll do it anyways. So the style tag goes in the head of the HTML document. Uh, okay, let's give this a try. Yeah, so the style tag goes in the head of the document. This thing here. Right, okay. so that's just pulling in pop-ins from the Google APIs. And then all we need to do is line up a style tag inside the body, for example, or okay, on a specific P or span or something. Okay, um, and then what, just style? Style and equals and then font, font family, yeah. And that just pop-ins, I do? And pop-ins, comma, sans serif, if you, well, I mean, just put pop-ins should work. Okay. It, it might actually want you to have pop-ins named, so you might need to put it in single quotes with a capital P. Um, I don't know how picky the CSS will be on that, but. Who knows? Okay. Uh, here is something you can make. Some web font. Okay. Oh, uh, so 
this might work when you're running it locally. It would be limitation exists if it's running once it's been deployed into an app service. Uh, sandbox. Gotcha. Interesting. Right. So what do you think the limitation is in that sandbox? The documentation says it has to do with GDI plus. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, so it might work here, but then not up in the real world. How does it work here? Uh, the name import is not Oh, hello, Reza. <laughs> <laughs> not the first time I have run Especially... into that this week. Especially confusing when it's not a official Razor file. And yeah. yeah. Doesn't know about it. So unfortunately, I tried changing it to DCS HTML and I got like some of the functionality I was looking for in terms of code highlighting, but not all of it. Can you still type your models when you're using the templating engine like that? Ah, uh, kind of. Okay, yeah. So this that does. Yeah, so it works. Pop, but maybe not in, in the actual place. So we'll have to try that. Um, can you type your models? Yes. So one of the limitations inside of this is that you would normally type your model with like a model and then give it some sort of concrete model type. That yes. unfortunately doesn't work, um, but you can get away with something similar. Um, so you can have this thing, uh, what is it like implement? Um, and then there's a special class that you can implement that comes from this Razor Core library that allow you to get at least some of the IntelliSense working okay. based sure. on it. Uh, and then in the function itself, um, you can put in um, hard types or um, concrete types instead of this anonymous one, but you have to do it like um, this Razor And then give it your view model here. So the type would go there. Okay. Yeah. And then when you're actually rendering it, instead of giving it this anonymous, you do like, like this p dot model. Uh, and then this one is typed so that you can give it like a view model. Not that the same as what a view model is, but. Right, right. And then just new it up and assign like that. Okay, yeah. so I have another question then. Um, what do you think the benefit is of approaching it this way versus standing up another app um, and actually just hosting the page, having it render off inside of like the entire, for example, MVC engine, and then just getting the string back? Go ahead. Yeah, Dave, you're already there. Oh, maybe I misunderstood. But so are you saying like have another site that? You would hit a like a URL to go and render. Right. So rather than rather than you firing up the Razor View engine here, compiling the page and then rendering it mm -hmm. in here in memory inside the function, calling out, passing in a parameter that loaded an object, for example, and rendered a page, and then return yeah. the entire HTML string rendered out. So the the page would have to be publicly available, which you might not uh. want, is one consideration that just came to the top of my head. We'll see if Simon has any other ideas. I mean, we, you could probably work around it by like using a premium app service on like its own private VNet and so forth. But that just feels like it's another whole moving part. Like it's another whole thing you have to deploy and enter deployment pipeline somewhere. Um, sure. And then figure out like what the parameters are that you're passing over to it. Because it could be that you're passing a fairly complex model down into this view. So in order to, to rehydrate that in another service, either you'd have to like serialize your whole model out and send it over or put it in a database and then generate some sort of unique ID and pass unique ID over. Then you're kind of like integrating two services via the database, which always feels like a bad idea to me. I mean, it, it's kind of harmless in this situation, I think, but I would hesitate to, to recommend integrating applications at the database layer anywhere for fear that it's going to become accepted practice inside your organization. So I guess, I guess though, um, it would depend on whether 
what you're trying to represent is something that's already going to exist in a database. Because if that's the case, then just understanding what the unique ID is and then mm-hmm. queuing up the page request isn't as as bad of a deal. But I guess there's like from a plus minuses perspective, in, in this particular case, we're binding ourselves already to a PDF tool. Now we're binding ourselves to Razor Engine. So we've got two, mm-hmm. we've pulled in two dependencies into the project on this side. But at the same time, we don't have to expose a public page or come up with some kind of token exchange for security or you can avoid a lot of those other complexities that way. But then you don't have the development experience that you would have inside of an MVC app that you deployed to app services. So there's probably a lot of stuff to consider to make this call. It is, as with all things, swings and roundabouts. It's going to be trade-offs on both directions. So I guess make a decision based on your own project what the, the right solution is for you. Yeah, but having more tools in the belt, I mean, you don't, can't use a hammer for everything, right? Not everything's uh, a coconut. Yeah. Not, not, not everything is a coconut. Yes. Some, <laughs> some things are the leak crystal. And that is, hammer is definitely not the right tool for that. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you for another option for putting out PDS in a little bit more fancy way, bringing in a view engine here, uh, Simon. And uh, we hope that you join uh David, Simon, and myself on the next episode of the ASP.net Monsters. Remember to like, comment, share. Uh, do do the question thing down below. We, we're we willing to try stuff on the fly. And uh, if you follow that, uh, hit that little uh, dingy bell button, then you'll get alerts when we publish new episodes here on the ASP.net Monsters. We will see you all next time. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Cheers.